Hey everybody, it's Party Lead. Welcome you to our final video from the Africa Pack DLC Showcase miniseries. Very long title. I had to like think it up as I as I said it. Uh, but yes, this is the uh, the last episode of this miniseries uh, as we're going to be tackling the final animal. Unless I'm horribly mistaken, I believe we are tackling the final animal. I should perhaps say animals. Though that's a bit of a that's a bit misleading, which is why I was avoid avoiding saying that. But we are getting the uh, the African penguin in today, folks. And after this, of course, we are going to be returning to Elite Zoo South and our franchise mode. Let's play again. Those of you that have been following that along will you know slip right in and, and know exactly what's been going on. But even those of you who have uh, maybe only come to this channel for the first time as a result of this DLC showcase, don't hesitate to join in on the uh, franchise mode. Let's play as well. Uh, we'll have, you know, tours and stuff to help people get caught up. It's a, there's a lot to do still, even though it's, you know, over 200 episodes in. It's a fantastic time. Don't hesitate to join in on the fun there. Now, I'm going to try, I'm going to be honest with you right off the bat right now, because I can already tell that the beginning of next week is going to be kind of wild for me. And the middle of next week, I should finally be able to share why things have been so just absolutely bonkers for the last however long. Uh, but I think the final kind of like part of that is, uh, is going to be Monday, Tuesday of next week. So the next episode might not be until, what would it be? I guess Thursday. I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and release it on Tuesday, but there's a chance that it might not be, uh, delay. Uh, there's a chance that it might be delayed. Sorry. Uh, and I just wanted to get that word out there because I, I can already, I already kind of know ahead of time that it might be happening. However, when that episode does come again, yes, we will be back at Elite Zoo South with our uh, franchise mode Let's Play. Anyway, enough about that. Let's talk about what we're actually working on today. I thought it'd be nice to kind of sort of end our uh, exploration of these uh, African pack animals with a bit of a more... <laughs> I, I hesitate to call it simple enclosure because it isn't, you know, simple per se. Uh, it's quite large and it's got, you know, a couple of layers and levels to it, but something a bit more, I don't know, maybe traditional uh, is the right word or, or I don't know. I don't know exactly what I would phrase it, but uh, trying to like mimic their natural habitat, uh, but also retain some zoo like uh, elements, I suppose, you know, allow there to be a visible uh, barrier. You know, a lot of the time you may have noticed I, uh, I try to avoid a barrier that just looks like a zoo barrier, but I, I really wanted to try out one that came through with the uh, the aquatic DLC, uh, I believe it was, that I never actually used. I don't think I've used it yet. And uh, I was I was toying around with it at one point. I was like, you know, this is actually a really nice uh, aesthetic. So I wanted to use that. I wanted to create like a couple of viewing spaces and just experiment with, uh, with this kind of an enclosure construction. We'll, uh, again, we'll be integrating these guys at Elite Zoo, uh south as well which allows us to you know do two things basically in quick succession because we're doing this here uh, again a bit more of a uh, uh I, I guess what i mean to say is uh to me it feels more like what i would expect a zoo to actually build it's actually viable maybe is the right word um so that's kind of what we're building here today and at elite zoo south will definitely do something you know infinitely extravagant uh, way more than is actually uh, reasonable to match that elite in our elite zoo uh, company um, title, right? But uh, but yeah, so you know, giving them a nice space to swim. It's still still doing. It's it's still a little over the top, but not as over the top as uh, as it might be. But giving them a space to swim, uh, making sure they have again somewhat familiar uh, terrain and territory. A couple of you know rocks sticking out here and there. The sandy beaches that seems to be their vibe and again just trying to guess all this uh based simply off of that picture you just caught a glimpse of there uh didn't actually uh, of course i don't know what their uh uh you know terrain preferences or anything uh, are what what their terrain preferences are yes grammar uh right now so uh just a bit of guesswork based on that image and, and my assumptions because i do know that they're largely in um you know south africa and namibia uh, on the coasts of and uh, I'm sure the little island, like tiny islands and stuff uh, in that area. So just using that as my uh, guide, I suppose, to test myself. You know, mainly sand. Uh, I, I do end up learning after the fact that they actually need a bit of soil as well. So that's uh, something I leave behind. I figured they wouldn't care much for grass, and that is accurate. They do not. Uh, but yeah, not not uh, overdoing it. Just playing around with some rocks. It just it felt kind of almost 
therapeutic and hopefully it feels sort of therapeutic for you as well with the music in the background and everything just to have something a little less uh ridiculous <laughs> i don't know how else to put it uh just kind of the vibes i had today i guess maybe um it, it's funny i feel like with planet zoo especially with build sessions so much has to do with like the vibe of the day uh i don't know about you know everybody else who's watching obviously uh, talking to people from all over the world so there's no single answer to this but i don't know what uh the the climate's been like wherever you're at you know a big part of the world is going through some ridiculous heat uh toronto is no different it's we're, we've been burning up but uh for the last couple of days <laughs> we've been having these thunderstorms still burning up somehow but also been having these thunderstorms it's fantastic we got to be uh humid and uh and rained on but anyway uh, the, the gray gloomy skies and the weird green tint that these storms can sometimes bring. Uh, it's, I don't know, I guess it's put me in a bit of a, like a serene a sort of a vibe. I like rain. I like the sound of rain. I like uh, thunderstorms. I like lightning. Uh, we're fortunate to have a pet uh, rabbit who doesn't care if it, uh, if it's, if it's a thunderstorm. Almost, I think, I think she's almost happier when it's a, a thunderstorm because it's like well no no birds of prey are gonna be flying in that so i'm pretty safe uh no, she loves it but uh you know so we don't have to worry about that it's, it's nice it's chill vibes and i think that's kind of what drew uh, it was actually uh we, we had a th thunderstorm as i was recording this and i just it was great i was just like no music listen to the rain and, and establishing this rather again yeah like natural space uh, i didn't want to go like too over the top you know um what's the word like i didn't want to make like a zen garden reference or anything like that but it does have a bit of tranquility to it again sort of a, that beach vibe it's got that gentle slopes you know a couple of couple of hard edges a couple of rocks here and there nothing too uh aggressive or loud or obnoxious you actually see me uh put in like right now i'm building this little plaza space uh it's like a viewing area to be honest i i, I would have done things a little differently i think in hindsight uh but there are some really fun end results that i that i get over here takes me some time to get there but there are some fun end results that uh you know if i'd if i'd been too particular about smoothing this right off the bat i would have never had those fun end results so it's just a uh, an opportunity i guess it was just like another opportunity to explore i don't know i, I look back at this time lapse and it kind of makes me think about like uh yeah just you know just going with the flow this is what i was talking about it's just like that gap over there uh with my sometimes neuroticism it would have uh, i would have never let that happen uh but you know, I didn't realize it. I'd already put the path down and the barrier down and everything. And I was like, I'm not going to undo everything just to smooth that out. So why don't we embrace that? And we put down those little wooden slats over there. And you'll see that comes up a little bit afterwards as well. Uh, but I was going to reference this as well. It's like, you'll see at one point I put down something uh, quite gaudy. In fact, quite bright and, and, and loud. And I like it. I mean, I, I like this kind of thing um, typically. But again, today just well, wasn't, uh, wasn't vibing with me. I was just like, you know what? Not feeling it breaks that uh breaks that rather again serene feeling that kind of natural feeling i guess I, I think that's what i like is like the gravel the e even this um barrier that i'm building over here it's all earth tones and stuff and and it, it just feels very i don't know natural is that the right word i mean the floor is plaster here how natural is that but you'll see i try to build a little like planter kind of a thing and then i go Nah, I don't like this either. It was weird. Yeah, it's weird. I'm curious, actually. Those of you that play the game as well, when you're building, do you ever feel that way? Do you ever do you always go in with a uh, a game plan and then you stick to it and then you you, know, you just do that, or do you sometimes just kind of let uh, uh, your headspace take control? Because I don't often just do that. Uh, typically, I'll have a you know a, a bunch of references. I'll have done like a bunch of you know historical or, or cultural research and stuff like that. Uh, every once in a while, I'll kind of just do like, a, well, let's see where this takes us kind of a thing. And this felt like one of those days. Uh, but yeah, so you'll see what I do over here is I'll uh, actually pull. I am trying to like smooth this out. I was trying to figure out like, am I liking this or not? That was that pause there of me just like second guessing literally everything. Uh, but yeah, you can see I actually extend this. And I actually, I really like this. That's the Australian wooden planks with just plaster over top. And there's something about, again, it, it's not... It's, it's natural colors, you know, it's like, it's not dull. It's not super saturated like the little rooftop canopy that I was making in that bright orange, but it, it does have that color to it. It does have a bit of punchiness to it, but because it's so like natural, it just feels, I don't know, it feels right. And and honestly, I really want to do this um, 
I want to do more of this. I really like how this ended up looking. Uh, and, and like, yikes, you know, I would have never, ne this would have never happened if I had been, like, super, like, precise and, and, and perfect about how this space worked out. But now I have a new kind of, like, uh, aesthetic that I quite like and that I'm going to try and uh, recreate at Elitsu uh, South and, 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 and find a, a way to integrate that kind of a thing because I think it looks quite nice, that plaster and then the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the wood sort of paneling or, or what have you. That's interesting. Or there's more ways we can uh, play around with that and, and make it interesting. But uh, got of course get this entrance over here. I thought it was nice as well to get these penguins next to the uh, the king penguins because it's just like you know penguins right next to each other is like having the tortoises right next to each other or like having I don't know you know the chimpanzee and the bonobo right next to each other. Uh, there's a there's a, like a story there. There's a connection there that goes beyond the animal's own space. It, it, it's uh, it's like curating the layout, right? It's curating the, the story that you're telling as people walk through your zoo. And I like doing that wherever, wherever possible. Again, if you watch the franchise mode less plays, you'll, you'll know. I enjoy doing that wherever possible. What I don't enjoy is when the game crashes on me. And unfortunately, you're going to see that uh, the game actually crash, crashes not once, but twice during this time lapse, costing me a fair bit of time. So I'm very glad that I was in this tranquil mood because uh you know what i was like well that's unfortunate but that's okay i wasn't all that you know upset about it or anything just go with the flow uh but you'll see it will actually crash again uh for some reason i can't get an underwater feeder in on this uh on this enclosure folks uh i did manage to save it before it crashed this time so that was good i just edited it out but uh hey it is what it is it's not the end of the world hope you all enjoy this time lapse though that is more or less it uh back to uh, regular speed at this point where we're gonna take a look at the animals all right folks we are back from the time lapse and i am pretty pleased with our current circumstances for a couple of reasons for one we have a nice big uh, new space for the uh penguins to play in but for two and three i suppose we also have with us a baby rhino and a baby fennec fox like i said uh that i would be doing this session i actually fast forwarded a lot of the time uh, before I even started recording the time lapse, so uh, we'd be able to spend some time with some of these uh, baby animals while we bring in the uh, the penguins over here and hopefully see the uh, see the African penguins in uh, in action and see them have uh, babies as well. Got quite a few crashes today as well. I'm not sure what's going on. Hopefully, when we return to franchise mode, we're not going to see a bunch of these crashes continue. But uh, I'm sure you saw the edits uh, during the recording. I had to redo you know parts of uh, parts of the 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 enclosure but anyway that's behind us now let's move on forward and uh, and see how the uh, penguins like the space we've made for them well before we get into that though of course let's actually see uh everything there is to see about the um african penguin the Sphin sphiniscus demersus uh I don't know, let me check something over here completely different where is the separation down over here All the way down, right up until the uh, genus. The genus is where the separation happens, right? I guess, right, right. Okay, that, fair, fair, fair. Hey, interesting. I was just like uh, wondering. I wasn't expecting it, I guess, to be that drastically different, but uh, I suppose it does make sense. Anyway, the African penguin, the Sphiniscus demersus, 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 is endangered. I think that's the first animal of this pack that's been endangered, actually. If we take a look at the fennec fox, just doing a quick double check over here, least concerned. We've got the uh, the rhino, of course, the southern white rhino, near threatened, and we have the uh, the meerkat, which reminds me, by the way, if you do not follow me on Twitter, um, I understand whether you have Twitter or you don't have Twitter. There's reasons for not following certain folks. If you if you don't follow me on Twitter, if you're not on Twitter, uh, try and find a way. If if you're on your on your phone and you go to the description and you tap my Twitter link, you should be taken to my profile without having to log in or install the app or anything, and uh, check out the tweet I put out. Uh, earlier this week, maybe yesterday or day before, I guess, when this goes out, uh, with regards to meerkats, I got a really awesome uh, care package uh, from the folks at Planet Zoo. Uh, it's a very sort of creative and, and, and clever um, care package. I thought it was awesome, and I uh, just thought, you know, you might be interested in seeing it, because uh, not only is it visually quite cool to see, but, uh, but it, it, it's fun in a few ways. And if you're into animals and you're into zoos and stuff like that, uh, and conservation, I think you'll quite like it. So just something to, to consider. Uh, but yeah, these guys are least concerned. So I, I guess the uh, the African uh, penguin... Great. 
<laughs> like literally I could just write penguin and get fewer results. The African penguin is the only endangered animal in this uh, uh, in this set of animals. Uh, population wild is 41,700. The African penguin is a flightless bird that inhabits the coastline and islands of South Africa and Namibia. The African penguin has a black back and flippers, black feet, and a black face mask with white surround. With white white surrounding it? With white with white surrounding Can you use the word surround like that? I don't think I've ever seen it before. It also has a white torso with a black strap across the upper chest. The eyes of the African penguin are surrounded by pink patches, which are used in thermal regulation. Oh, interesting. For the whole body? Or just for the head? Like, for the, for the, for the brain, right? I just want to say also, like, how, how... I've said this before, I know, but, like, how strange is that? That there is a specific patterning. Like, to what end? To what benefit? Like, do their predators see that patterning and go, oh, that's just a rock? Like... To what end? I'm very curious. I've, I always get curious about that kind of stuff. Like, I understand a tiger's stripes. You know, I understand a leopard's spots. I understand, um, lo- like, it all makes sense. But, but patterning like this, it's not even patterning. It's a, it's a strip, right? Like, why? So curious. And, and the pink for thermoregulation, is the pink particularly important for thermoregulation? Like, you know, obviously with blacks and whites, you have those extremes and how they treat you know, light, like reflect light, you know, black absorbs it all, white reflects it all. And so you get different types of uh, heat on the surface of those materials. Like if you put something black uh, out in the sun and you put something white out in the sun, uh, the surface of the black thing, it could be the same material, but the surface of the black thing will be hotter than the surface of the white thing. Uh, You can feel it, like you can physically feel it. That's why, you know, if you're wearing black clothes in the sun, you're going to feel it more than if you were wearing lighter or white clothes. Uh, so it's like, why pink, though? Is that, like, the perfect temperature? Like, does that... Ah, I'm so curious. So very curious. Anyway, um, each penguin has a unique pattern of black spots on its chest. Uh, African penguins are 24 inches to 27.2 inches in size and weigh between 4.84 pounds and 7.7 pounds. Males are slightly larger than females and have a longer beak. The African penguin is an endangered species with multiple factors contributing to its vulnerability. Historically, their eggs were heavily poached and their nest sites were often disturbed, although now there are conservation efforts in place to prevent this. They are also vulnerable to oil spills and their food sources are being depleted due to overfishing. It is estimated that conservation efforts have helped their population recover by 20% since 1968, though their population is currently declining and the African penguin may become extinct within 15 to 20 years. Oh my god, that is... Wow. That really kind of puts things into perspective, doesn't it? 15 to 20 years, that is absolutely no time. 15 to 20 years is absolutely no time. Wow. Um, wow. That was very sombering. I think that's the first time we've seen a number... Uh, put down like that. Wow. 41,000 estimated will become extinct in 15 to 20 years. Oh my god. Okay. Wow. Oh. That's, uh... Wow. That... Yeah. I've I've got nothing. I'm actually speechless. Wow. Uh... Okay. Wow. Uh, they are located on the coast and the waters and the little, you know, I'm sure they're like small islands and stuff, uh, off the coast of Namibia and South Africa. Uh, they don't need too much space individually, but I imagine they can use, like, they can get quite large in number in a, in a group, and, and so they'll, uh, they'll use up, you know, hopefully all the space that we've made for them. Uh, water requirement is 135 meters square, and then, of course, there is a deep water requirement for the penguins as well. I was not able to place a, uh, underwater feeding machine or whatever it's called. It kept crashing when I tried doing that. I'm not sure why, folks. I don't know why it's happening. Yeah, my computer has recently restarted. It's a very souped-up computer as well, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, maybe the save has just become a little buggy, perhaps, but, uh, but that's okay. In the franchise mode playthrough, when we add them in, we'll definitely uh, get one of those in. Species data. There we go. The group can be between six and 500 strong. Uh, whether it's uh, a group, uh, a mixed group, or male or female bachelor group, the, the size is the same. Um, and again, there's no, because they're monogamous, there's no, like, specific, uh, ratio, basically, I guess. 
Uh, no dominant system. Uh, mating system is monogamous. Relation with humans is neutral, and guests can enter the habitat. Amazing. Just like the other penguins. Uh, size is 26 inches for males and 25.6 inches for females. Average sizes, of course. Life expectancy, 27 years across the board. Weight, 6.82 pounds across the board on average. Sexual maturity at 4 years. Sterility at 14. Wow. They live almost half their lives sterile. Well, what are the other penguins like? I love having, I love being able to compare like this. It's just cool, I think. Wow, these guys are, I, I guess that might be at least part of the reason why it is harder to, like, basically in, in, in one king penguin's lifetime, they'll be able to have, you know, X number of uh, offspring. Whereas in one African penguin's uh, lifetime, they'll have significantly fewer because not only do they not live for as long, if I'm not mistaken, but they also aren't able to have uh, children for a big, a big part of that life. Now, one thing I've realized is, uh, is it always just a se age of sexual ster sterility in one number? Now, is that uh, for males and females? Um, because obviously for humans... There's a difference in, in, in male and female, you know, age of, of sterility. Uh, but what about with all these animals? I mean, uh, it just now has occurred to me uh, that this has kind of just been one number across the board. Um, and I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. I don't have the answer to that question, which is why I'm asking it. Because if I had the answer, I would, I would tell you the answer. Number of offspring per mating event is two. Uh, gestation incubation period is one month. Interbirth is 12. And reproduction and captivity is average. Man. Okay, that explains kind of the challenges we have, I guess. Social needs. African penguins are social animals, and when not foraging at sea, they live in extremely large colonies of many thousands of mated pairs. Wow, okay, interesting. Reproduction. During the breeding season, African penguins will come ashore. Males arrive on shore four days before females. They'll use these four days to locate a nest site with which to impress a female. They build nests out of pebbles, guano, and other debris. Guano is bird poop, in case you, uh, you don't know. Uh, African penguins mate for life. So when females arrive, previously mated pairs will locate each other with specific calls. Hmm, interesting. Unattached females will move amongst the males. Males will attempt to attract females with vocalizations, neck swinging displays, and showing off their nest site. I just, I love it. I could like, I could, you could almost like picture it. <laughs> it's just like, hey, hey, check this out. Check this out. It's got living room. It's got a two bedroom. I got 10 square feet. I just, I don't know. When a male has attracted a female, they will solidify their bond by vocalizing together and entwining their necks. Copulation is initiated by the penguins bowing to each other. The female will lay two eggs in the nest three weeks after mating. The male and female will incubate the egg for 40 days. Hold on, hang on, hang on. The two eggs. Where's the other egg? They just disappeared between that sentence and this sentence. Um, it'll incubate for 40 days, taking it in turns to hunt during this time. Okay. Okay, that sentence is a little... It's obvious what it means, because logic, but the sentence doesn't isn't right, unless I'm mistaken. So the male and female will incubate the egg for 40 days. I'm not sure about the discrepancy between two and one. Um, they're, they're incubating in turns while the other one goes on the hunt. They're not taking the egg out on the hunt. Taking it in turns to hunt during this time. What is the it there? Uh, what... Well, it would imply it's the egg, but I, I imagine they're not taking... Maybe they are. I imagine they're not taking the egg to their hunts. Um, so I can only assume they're... What is, the sentence is trying to say is they're, they take turns incubating the egg while, the, while, while they also take turns going hunting. That... It, right. I imagine that's what that, that means. Uh, when the eggs hatch, the chicks are extremely vulnerable and often preyed upon. The parents will protect the chicks closely and take it in turns to hunt and feed the chick. So now I'm not sure, because you could take the chick to hunt. Is this a turn of phrase that I'm just unfamiliar with? Take it in turns? Because I would assume this means take it, the chick, in turns to hunt. Take turns taking the chick to hunt and feed. But, but obviously it's saying they will take turns hunting to feed the chick for 60 to 130 days. Okay. When penguin chicks are two to four months old, they will join a crash of older chicks that is watched over by adults. Chicks fledge at approximately four months old when they first go to sea. They will return to the place where they were born to molt between 12 and 22 months old. In 90% of cases, only one of the two chicks will reach fledgling, fledging age. Sorry. 
African penguins are fully grown at three years old and reproduce for the first time at four years old uh, for females and five years old for males. So different starting times, but sterility, we don't, uh, we, we don't know. Um, but you can see, right, maturity is marked as four years over here, but it's actually different. And that's been the case for quite a few animals. It just never occurred to me to question the, the age of uh, sterility. Um, okay, I know that was a very broken apart like reading of this, and I apologize for that, but while I wasn't confused about the egg and taking it to hunt, <laughs> as funny as the visual might be, um, the, uh, I, was, I was genuinely a little like, oh, do they teach the chick to hunt at this young age, or, or, or what's going on over here? But my assumption is that they don't, and then later, maybe when they hit two to four months old, that's when they start, or no, no, no. If they're going hunting, then they would have to wait until four months when they first go to sea. And that's probably when they start learning how to hunt, right? That, that, that's, that, that would make sense. Okay. I promise I know English. Um, but maybe this is a turn of phrase. Take it in turns. I know take turns or to do something in turns. But take it in turns to hunt and... Anyway. I, I don't know. I don't know. Learn something new every day, right? On the topic of learning new things, it looks like we have some fun facts to go over, but also, uh, yeah, it looks like the enrichment items are all same as before. Yeah. Block of frozen fish. Why? That feels new. I'm not sure, but overall, similar as, uh, as our prior penguins. Fun fact number one, African penguin eggs were seen as a delicacy up until the 1970s. This contributed to the species' decline. Yeah, you don't say. Uh, fun, fun fact number two. Uh, African penguins are preyed upon by sharks and fur seals in the ocean and kelp gulls, mongoose, cape, gennets, and domestic cats and dogs on land. Wow, okay. Hold on. I don't even, I'm not, I don't know what this is. I'll have to look that up. Uh, domesticated cats and dogs as well, eh? Jeez. Fun fact number three. The African penguin is also known as the jackass penguin due to its donkey-like cry. Not because it does stunts that uh, could cause it grievous injury, uh, but because of its donkey-like cry. Interesting. I'm curious to hear that. Uh, penguin feces, called guano, is an extremely effective fertilizer. The humans harvesting it disturb the nest sites of African penguins and remove one of the main materials penguins use to build their nests. Now that is an interesting fact, because I've known that guano is a very effective fertilizer. In fact, it was a very important uh, discovery. Uh, when would it have been? I, I think it was... I think it was like post-World War One, pre-World War II. I can't remember for the life of me now. But this was a very important... Um, this was very important in human history. Uh, finding out that guano is an extremely effective fertilizer. Um, but uh, but this, this is the second half is very interesting. And now I'm curious, like how... Yeah, like how, how does that... How does that affect their mating, right? Do... Have humans prevented... Um, <laughs> penguins from finding <laughs> mates? Uh, because of... Uh, because we're robbing the, the guano? I, I, I'm i curious. I like this one. I like this sound fact a lot. Uh, fun fact number five. African penguins cannot hunt while molting as their feathers are not yet waterproof. So they fast until their plumage has fully grown in. Molting takes three weeks and penguins lose 50% of their body weight in this time. Oh, wow. That's interesting as well. Okay. I really like these last two fun facts. Uh, I mean, I like this one as well. So all these three are fantastic. This one's good too. You know what? Yeah, these are great fun facts. All five of these, fantastic. Five for five. I love them. They're great. My favorites are probably these last two, but uh, these are all great fun facts. Great. Now let's have some fun with the uh, the, the animals themselves. Shall we? Animal trading over to the market. Afri I just absolutely love. I cannot stress enough how much I love that they've made this search option available. Like... This is this is good UX. UX being user experience. People often act, ask the difference between UI and UX. UI is how this thing looks. UX is having this thing exist in the first place. That's the difference. UI is 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 a visual um, execution that enables the user's experience. The UX. And my God, what a great UX upgrade that has been. A, a, a massive quality of life change. Uh, I. I like, and I've, <laughs> it's something I've talked about multiple times, like, oh, you know, this would be great if, if it would work like this, if we could just search like this, and then here we are. Because remember, they added it to Zoopedia first. Remember, Zoopedia didn't used to have this. They added it to Zoopedia, and I was like, but why didn't you just add it to this other thing as well? It must have been challenging one way or another, but I'm glad they did, and I'm glad we can now uh, do this stuff so much quicker. Now, while we wait for these uh, African penguins to arrive, why don't we go ahead, head down over here. That is, I was like, oh, there's a rhino. That's not a rhino. 
Hey, buddy. Oh, what a cutie. Oh, my God. I'm so... Oh, I'm so glad I fast-forwarded time. I am so glad. Just in case, we, you know, I wanted to make sure we, we saw them. I wanted to make sure we saw them. Look, look at how cute they are. Okay, hold on. Adonis. Oof, what a name. What a name. Adonis. I love it. What a cutie. Look at that run. Am I... Is this... Am I moving at double speed? No, I'm not. This is regular speed. This is what I get for calling them slow ambling animals last time. Hey, buddy. Would you lit up properly, shall we? Oh, they're so cute. Man, rhinos, elephants. I just... I saw this great gif uh, yesterday, day before, at some point, I don't know, it's all a blur. Uh, I saw this great gif of this elephant, um, it was titled Elephant, Baby Elephant Shows Off Its Balancing Skills or something like that. And this elephant just picking up a, a, a stick and putting it on its head. Oh god, look out. <laughs> parent coming in to rescue, nope, parent's just hungry for a meal. Alright, that's looking kind of funky, so I'm going to go ahead and reset this thing. such an interesting sound as well uh but yeah i was just sorry about that edit there There's some audio issues uh but uh but yeah it was uh it was uh it was an elephant just like putting a stick on its head i don't know why i don't know if i thought it was showing off or what was going on balanced it pretty well then dropped on the ground went on with his life oh, what's up with the eyes Alright, off you go, buddy. We also have Fennec Fox Babies. If I could find them. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, I didn't think they could get cuter. <laughs> Oh my god. I have no words. Afa and Amelia. Interesting uh, names, two very different name, uh, like name styles or name uh, origins, I would think. Oh my god, they're so cute. Many of you were saying in the comments, by the way, well, sorry, not many of you, but there were some of you in the comments that mentioned uh, actually having a pet. Uh, pet fennec fox that's amazing uh, and it was clarified that like yeah you need a license to have them yeah because they're exotic pets I, I assume but yeah I guess you can absolutely yeah legally and fairly and ethically have them as, uh, as, as pets that's great um, oh my god it is being this cute is unethical this isn't uh, that's not this this ain't right this isn't okay It'd be illegal to be this adorable where where'd the other one go where'd your sister go People are running away from some escaped animal somewhere. Listen, the otters won't kill you. They'll be fine. <laughs> okay, hang on. Oh man. Her tongue was sticking out. That was so cute. I just paused at the wrong time. Oh, the animation's weird. They just kind of like flip out. Sounds so cute and everything. Oh my god. They're so adorable. Like the adults are adorable, but the kids, the proportions are just. Okay, I know this is not supposed to be their episode, but uh, how can I. Oh my. Uh, how can I ignore that? Alright, let's head on over to our penguins. There they are. Okay, I've given them way too much space. <laughs> I've given them way too much space. We've got, looks like we've got another baby as well. Oh, those eyes are very red, aren't they? I'll take a quick look at if they're happy with this area. Oh, not enough soil. Or sand. Okay, I, I had a feeling they'd like more sand, but not uh, soil. Okay. Go ahead and add some more sand up over here. Actually, let's go with a coarser sand maybe up over here. Too much grass up top. Fair enough, fair enough. And down over here, some finer sand by the water. Of sand, but I need some soil. Uh, where are we? Soil. Well, up over here. There you go. Get rid of more of the long grass needs to be gotten rid of. 
down over here, perhaps. But down here, there's gonna be uh, out over here as well. Yeah. There we go. No, needs less snow. Oh, I see, because they've got a bit of snow up over here. That's not enough to, to cause us trouble, I don't think. Good for coverage. Okay, so they are good for a little bit of coverage. I had a feeling this tree would be a little problematic. Pull you back. There we go. They are willing to have some trees. I was I was wondering about that, like how, how, uh, how tree-free do they want to be for enrichment and everything. All right, cool. Adult population, we do need... At least another pair, right? And we get another pair. Yes, we can. Excellent. Grab you both. And to zoo. There you go. Cool. All right. Now oh, that's done. Oh, at least one of them swimming. Oh, can they escape? Actually, that's one more thing to check. I keep forgetting. I think we're. Oh no. A little bit of an escape spot over here. Not the end of the world. Easy enough to block this off. I wasn't sure if they'd be able to climb out of the uh, climb out of the the water uh, further down, but I think we sealed that off well enough. Do that. Come on, we go. Perfect. I think we'll say it is. Oh wow, these oh no, that's a king penguin. I mean they're they're fun to watch as well, but I thought it was the uh African penguins mating. Such an interesting look. And the eyes though, they're so red. I wonder if they have any uh, unique animations or if they're just like the uh, other penguins, the king penguins that are already in the game. Kind of chilling. I am curious how their babies look. I suspect they'll be a little different. Not 100% sure, but I suspect so. <laughs> I, th I think, yeah, a lot of the animations are the same as the... Uh, the other penguins. Which is probably, you know, an accurate... Uh, an accurate thing. I don't... I don't know about their... Oh yeah, okay, their cry is very, uh... Mule-like. Huh, what do you know? Learn something new every day. We got any swimmers down over here? Yes, we do. We're at the perfect time over here. So fast underwater. Again, I wish I could put the uh, feeding uh, machine down over here, but like I was saying, it is crashing every time I try to put it down. I really like that they add the underwater... Uh, like, it's such a big change. That, that was such a cool update. And now they've, they've added, uh, like, bears and stuff can go underwater too. Like, it's such a good update. Look, you look like you're flying. Um, and it'll it'll impact every animal, and, and, and we can see the uh, the effect of it even now, right? With the future DLC from when they added it. I'm talking about the aquatic DLC, obviously. And not just the DLC, but the uh, updates alongside the DLC. The free updates alongside the DLC. I love it. Oh, of course, I, the moment I stop following you, you do a trick, obviously. Story of my life story of my life. Something special about watching them uh, underwater. Just because it's still a relatively, you know, fresh thing. You don't get to do it. <laughs> just tell him. He just like went through that rock there. Alright. <laughs> Breaks the illusion a little bit. What do we got up over here? Nothing now. Off you go. Guys, still chill. Are you stuck over here? No, you should be able to move. 
Now you're just being uh, lazy, I guess. Yeah, they're good. Very much so. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, you know, this isn't too large a space. They'll be fine. Got guests coming through. Gee, okay, it's maybe, maybe it's a little too big. But I just thought it'd be nice to have, like, kind of a viewing space over here. I really quite like uh, how this turned out, actually. I might pull this for uh, some uh, some experimentation at our uh, Elite Zoo South. Just like the elevated platform. It, it was born out of an accident, happy accident, with, uh, with the terraforming over here not working out perfectly, but then I quite liked how it looked. Uh, initially, I was going to put a canopy down over here, but then I realized I could put a tree down in the middle, and it gives it a slightly nicer look. I feel like makes it feel makes it feel a bit more uh, natural, I guess. Well, literally, uh, rather than a, 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 an artificial roof. Uh, but if we go ahead and get some, um, let's see, continent, uh, Africa. What are we looking at here? Aquatic and desert. So Africa biome. Desert. We have quite a few options. We got the uh, the palm trees and stuff, right? I'm just wondering if I want to put down uh, river trees. Okay, I guess we can put down some like bushes and stuff. Bring bring the space to life a bit more, you know. I just again, I wasn't sure how uh, how accepting these guys would be of uh, of vegetation, so I was a bit careful. Really a bit too careful. There we go. Oh, I really like the uh, Sudanese uh, frankincense tree. I think it looks gorgeous. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. Put you down over here like so. Uh, like, I don't know, something about the colors uh, of not just the, the leaves, but the, the the wood itself. The patterning and stuff. I really quite like it. Down over here, maybe. You know, I think that animation was actually a little different. I think that animation was actually a little different. Offspring due January of next year. Wow, that's really fast. Wonderful. You know what? Looks like we're going to see baby penguins after all. Fantastic. I'm glad that worked out. I'm also glad I zoomed in when I did. Could have very easily missed that. I'm putting down some trees. Down up over here. Guy over, I think. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Just some tiny adjustments, nothing too major or wild. Just want to add a bit more, like, because we have the option, I just want to add a bit more to, to break the space up a bit. There we go. Let me lower it a bit more. Add a bit more variety as well. Sure. Yeah, there we go. How do you feel about that? Coverage wise, okay, we do have we do have some room. There is some some wiggle room. That's good to know as well for when we do our uh, go back to our franchise mode. Let's play. Go on here. <laughs> were those some smacks at the end there? I feel like they were. Wow. <laughs> there you have it, folks. That's the uh, the mini series. We had to get the uh, we had to get that in. Well, that's actually uh, really different though from all the other animals. Now, hang on a second. I don't recall seeing our uh, our other penguins. Um... Yeah, I guess not. I guess yeah. I guess it is different. Very different. Okay, interesting. Now, here's a question: Does it not to be not need to be cleaned up? Because I don't see any, like, remnants or what have you, you know? See nothing here? You see stuff here? Yeah, I guess it doesn't need to be cleaned up. It just kind of, like, gets into the, the sand and the soil and stuff. Are we disabled in breeding? The two wrongs are so cute. Again, different DLC, though, so I don't want to spend too much time on there to... For fear of miscommunicating anything. Um, that's the Southeast Asia Pack DLC. What do we got over here? You guys still yelling at each other? <laughs> Very curious about that interaction. It's like, what was going on there? Was that a rejection? You guys having a good time? He just found out about the pregnancy, maybe?
What about down over here? Where is our pregnant penguin? There she is. Already January. And that's how I feel right now as we enter July. It's like, yep. Basically already January. Come on. I don't want to pluck you out of the water. Don't make me do it. Yeah, the shapes are really interesting. I'm very curious about that pink as well. Again, I understand... I understand the purpose of, like, the coloration and stuff. But, like, why specifically pink? Like, is it... is Does that help retain a certain amount of, like, heat from the sun? Or, or does it help... Like, how does that... Why? Curious. Very curious. Come on now. Let's go. You got a baby on the way. I imagine it's already February in-game. It is. This baby is a, is a month overdue. Alright. We'll see what happens. We'll see when they decide to come out. Maybe when food gets dropped off. Come on. Time to feast away. Look at that one off in the distance. Like, hey, wait for me, damn it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I, I love the waddle so much. It's so good. Oh. That's so mean. Wow, that's you, you couldn't write that, man. That is so mean. Everyone's having their meal. Buddy arrives. Literally everybody turns away and leaves. Like, you could not write that. That is hilarious. What are the chances that worked out like that? Poor guy. Okay, 100%. That sounded like mules. 100%. Yeah, okay. I Yeah, absolutely. At first I was like, are they laughing at our poor friend's expense there? That's hilarious. Up over here. Lonely penguin. The only friend he has is the friend he sees in the mirror mobile. Now that's... Wow. Oh no, there we go. There's a, there's a buddy. Oh, they're just here for the mirror as well. Narcissists, a lot of you. I guess that's all you do with a mirror mobile, is you just kind of look at it. Now, do we have a baby penguin? You definitely don't look like an adult penguin. Oh my god, look at that. Look at how- it looks like you have dislocated shoulders. There's like, just kind of like hanging off the side there. And barely like, move them around. What a cutie. They're such- they're so round, they're so like... The shape is... <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, it's just like... Rounded... Cylinder, kind of, with a... Sphere on top of it, they're so cute. Not as cute as those Fennec Fox babies, I'm sorry, I gotta be honest. They're still cute. They do look like they they have no control over their arms. Like, they, they basically look like they have no nerve endings there, or like they're like they're dislocated, like I was saying, and they're just kind of like along for the ride, you know? Like, they can't actually move those arms, and maybe that's the case. Maybe that's why they can't go swimming until a certain age. But like, yeah, they can't actually move those arms, so they're just kind of flopping about until they train those muscles or what have you. Interesting. Very slow, also. Very quick to reproduce, actually. That was kind of... Well, I guess it's because the gestation period is so short. Are you gonna jump? Oh, no. Okay, you can go down the slope. Wow, really? That's a pretty steep slope. I wasn't expecting that. The water. Off we go. Come on. Time to dive in. There we go. Predictable. But folks, 
as that penguin dives in, I think it's time to say we're done with our own deep dive. Now, there is the, uh, I was thinking about this, I was, I was mulling over this, there is the uh, Scarab that I touched on as well. That has come with this, uh, with this DLC. But I think we'll leave the uh, Scarab and all the exploration and stuff there for our, uh, for our, uh, franchise mode playthrough. Because again, they, with, with those guys, you can't just, like, kind of put down a, a thing and you drop them in there. I feel like it'd be nice to segue, so to speak, into our, uh, into our, Af our, our, I call it Africa, but into Elitsu South and our, and our, uh, our work over there. Because we've been meaning to put down a bunch of exhibit animals... Um, yeah, exhibit animals for some time now, uh, especially as they pertain to the Africa section of the zoo. So it, it'd make a nice segue, bring us back to uh, Elite Zoo South, and it would also allow us to showcase the uh, the 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 scarab without um, wh while also continuing our work at uh, in the franchise mode. Let's play. Sorry, I was very uh, broken apart because I was distracted by how adorable these animals are. So I can keep my uh, train of thought. <laughs> I guess. Folks, I guess this is it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a fun time with all of these animals because I certainly did. I mean, this DLC is uh, feeling quite fun. I do like what they've done as far as like the architectural pieces and stuff as well. Again, just as a reminder, largely the animals are all from the southern African sort of region, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Uh, but the architecture is uh, quite specifically North African. So, uh, you know, they, they did that and they kind of went with a Pan-Africa pack in that kind of a way, which was an interesting choice, not what I would have expected. Um, but we, we have ended up with a lot of very nice uh, building pieces. We've also got a lot of interesting new animals that are very fun to hang out with. I mean, the baby Fennec Fox, so is... Uh, I don't know. Maybe Meerkat's also up there. What was your favorite animal? What was your favorite animal from uh, from the DLC specifically? The meerkat also have a unique, like, digging animation. Meerkats are also just straight up amazing. But that Fennec Fox Baby, though. Very hard to resist the charms of the Fennec Fox Baby. But, folks, I hope you enjoyed this miniseries because uh, I certainly did. And, again, if you did, let me know. Leave a like. Leave a comment. It does make a very big difference in just letting me know what people have been enjoying on the channel and what I should or shouldn't do moving forward. So don't hesitate to have your voice heard because it does have a direct impact on Again, what's going on on the channel. But folks, it is time to bid farewell to our uh, mini-series zoo once again. And uh, return to Elite Zoo South, yes. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who have been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.